It's your fairy godmother Mint, and welcome back to the Mint Coven. Where are we? You might be asking. <laughs> we are in my office because Yule has taken over the meditation room. Just sometimes it be like that, you know. I just got my January God's Provisions box, and I thought it would be a great time to unbox it and to talk about how to choose a deity to work with. Now, of course, you do not have to work with deities. That is not a requirement of anyone. You do, that is not something that you need to do. You don't have to pick a deity. You don't have to worship a deity. That's that's not, that's, that's your choice. Depending on what path you're following, that's your choice. However, if you want to work with a deity, hello. As I was saying, <laughs> what was I saying? <laughs> I don't know. Let's open this box and talk about deity work. You don't have to work with deities, of course, but there may be a time in your life where you feel like you would like to start working with a deity. You feel like you want some extra guidance on a subject or you want some extra guidance in your path in general, or perhaps you're going through something in your life where you feel like you are in need of some divine presence in your life, which is completely understandable. And I'm going through that right now myself. And so, so it's really natural to reach out and to um, make that decision that you would like to work with a higher power. Ooh, uh, what is this? <laughs> and this is the first box that I've received from them that was deity focused. And so I was really excited to see what they put together. This is Majestic Gold Shimmering Gold Bath Bomb. Ooh. It's a pyramid. It's a little banged up. Some things get a little banged up when they come to me in the mail. I can hear them throwing the boxes against my door sometimes. It's super frustrating. Ooh, it smells really nice. It's, yeah, it's a little crushed, but it is a beautiful pyramid, and I'm excited to use this probably today. You know, it's a weekend. Might as well take a nice, lovely bath. Also have a gorgeous amethyst here. The amethyst, look at that. Really pretty piece. There's also an Isis Ascension Wings bracelet. It says, sacred symbols. Wings of Isis, wings of the Divine Mother, representing guardianship and guidance, an empowered view of higher consciousness, and the freedom of transcendent being. Beautiful. That is lovely. Frankincense incense. Mm, you know I love frankincense. I'm always talking about it. It's super great to use. Ooh, what, oh. Ooh, that smells so good. Oh, it's like a, it's like a lovely musk, like very sensual. I love that. Holy crap. Mm, that smells really good. I'm going to savor these and probably order more. Wow. I'm not even talking about daily work right now. I'm just, whenever I get a box, I'm just like, what's inside? Ooh, anointing oil, Isis and rebirth. Oh, this is so freaking dope. Kate's magic, intention-based aromatherapy, a sacred transformational blend inspired by the Egyptian goddess of death and rebirth out with the old and in with the new. What a perfect new year uh, oil to use. Out with the old and in with the new. So I have to smell it immediately. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh my gosh. It smells like I should just drink it. Wow. I'm so, I feel so lucky that when I get things like this in the mail, like things that have scents and things that like smell like things, I'm so lucky that they don't stink. Cause you know, I won't be able to be like, mm, I'd be like, <laughs> things stink, they stink. Nothing I can do about it. But this does not stink. This smells amazing. It smells, what is it? Vanilla and rose. I'm not, I'm getting like barely a hint of rose. I'm smelling vanilla. It actually, to me, it smells like, like a fifties milkshake, like a thick, 50s milkshake and you're sitting at the oh and you're sitting in the booth with your friends and you're laughing and you're having a nice time and you you know you're done with school and the school's out so you're getting a celebratory milkshake and you're sitting in the booth and you lean in to sip your first sip of delicious vanilla milkshake that's what this smells like it smells like hope it smells like freedom <laughs> It smells really nice. <laughs> so have the key, a blue lotus whole flower infusion. Yes. Tea baby. Oh yes, give me the tea. Yeah, isn't that gorgeous? That's Kaiju, get out of the trash. I can see you. Like, what are you thinking? No, don't come over here, I'm sorry. Mm -mm. And we also have a deck in here, Isis, the Isis Oracle deck. 
this is wonderful i've actually always wanted this deck and i just never purchased it for myself i think oracle gives you such a great definitive answer without having to do a lot of um like research or searching or you know asking more questions or you know looking up the meaning blah, 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 all of that which is wonderful you know i i love tarot but i do have a love for oracle as well and people are always like pooping on oracle decks and i don't think and i think it's unfair because they're they're wonderful and beautiful and they offer uh, a great deal of insight for people they, they actually have instead of being just like a picture and like one one line or one word it has a really nice long like explanation for each card so you're like having a hard day and you're like i don't know what's going on like you know everybody is just coming for me today i feel like i'm being attacked from all sides mother of life when life seems dry depleted filled with repetitive tasks or simply stagnant and stifled isis the mother of life holds the ability to revive even the most numb resistant and difficult circumstances in your life she calls to you now seeking to bestow gifts of life upon you be bold and brave open your arms and receive mm. oof i love these and then each card has a different back which is really beautiful so you still get that gorgeous you know artwork to look at the gorgeous symbolism and you get a full paragraph instead of just one line that is amazing these are beautiful cards cannot wait to work with these when you've decided to work with a deity but you are unsure of which avenue you want to go in you're unsure of which pantheon that you're interested in and things of that nature i think it's always important to first think about your own heritage and what and what deities are aligned with your heritage. There's always going to be a really strong connection between you and your cultural deities. So I think that looking that up and exploring that avenue first is really important because you already are going to have kind of a bit of a rapport with them. If you are really serious about working with a deity, you're going to have to do a lot of studying. There's a lot of studying involved and there's a lot of reaching out involved as well. If you're unsure about your deity and you just want to have them come to you organically, then meditation and asking the universe for a sign or for a symbol for someone to come to you and give you that is really important. It doesn't have to be anything incredibly formal. You can write something out if you want. You can have a candle lit and just open yourself up to the universe and say, I am in need of guidance. I'm looking for a deity who aligns with my path, with my purpose, you know, and you're open to receiving them. And then you just kind of wait. And they may come to you in a dream. They may come to you by signs such as insects, um, animals, uh, actual like signs out in the world. You know what I mean? flowers um, in terms of like gifts that come to you things that you find along your path when you're taking a walk even like license plate numbers like there is there are so many different avenues so many different ways of you getting the sign it's it can be amazing a couple weeks ago i did my first working for grief and i was asking the same thing i was like i i need some guidance i would love some help um i need a direction to go in because i'm unsure of how to tackle this issue and the first sign that i received was a jumping spider i'm not afraid of spiders so it wasn't like a scary thing for me however jumping spiders do give me a little bit of the huh you know because they jump and because they jump it makes me feel like it's gonna jump directly in my hair and nothing's gonna get me but i'm always afraid of hurting them i'm afraid that when a bug is on me and i don't know where it is that i'm gonna like smack it if it tickles me or something like that and if there's a bug in my hair first thing i'm gonna do is like you know like that and like flick it out to its death and i don't want to do that <laughs> i saw it and it started walking in and it i was sitting in my meditation room with yule and we we're just like talking hanging out whatever I, and i look at yule and he's just like staring at the floor and so i follow his line of sight and i see the spider walking in the door like walking through the threshold right in the middle as if he's like coming to hang out like he's just like mm, right in the middle of the floor out in the open like no not under any cover and he's just like walking in there like him hey. Hi, you guys. And I was like, oh, okay. So I get down to get closer to him and he jumps. And I was like, oh, Jody, like you're going to have to come and get him because I don't want to hurt him. And so Jody comes in and then right as Jody's taking him outside, I go, hmm, that was my first sign was a jumping spider, a spider, um, a weaver. Um, I just looked, I just looked to the left. <laughs> And on the wall, I thought it was a spider. It's not. It looks like um, 
the line from when I was like moving something over on the wall and it made like a squiggle down and then it's got like a little I'm just gonna show you <laughs> that I thought it was like a spider hanging from something but it's just a squiggle on the wall I'm so weird you guys anyway <laughs> but yeah that was my first sign so anything like that anything that comes to you in such an organic and normal and natural way you can count as a sign and it's really important when you're working with the 80s when you're beginning that path to write everything down so that you have an account of what is coming to you what messages you're getting what signs you're getting so that you can narrow it down to which deity it is now if you aren't getting the message like if they've been trying to show you the signs and symbols and like words and people are saying things and you're just not listening then they will usually get get a little bit more aggressive and kind of plant something in your path um, this happens often as well when people have an idea of a deity that they want to work with and someone else is actually reaching out so it can happen in many ways sometimes you reach out to a deity and sometimes they reach out to you and if it's not the deity that you you think you want to work with say you want to work with Aphrodite you're super excited to work with Aphrodite but like Hera is like no honey it's me uh, 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 uh. and you're like oh Aphrodite you know, and Hera's like hello it's me <laughs> like you have to pay attention and you have to understand that deities reach out to you in a time when you need them the most so you may not need Aphrodite right now you may be needing Hera and you just really want to work with Aphrodite but Hera is the one for you at the moment so be open to what deity is trying to give you the message because it could be anyone it could be anyone so just pay attention to the signs uh, look everyone <laughs> my husband just came home and brought me some beautiful flowers and a bts magazine <laughs> so excited another thing that you can do when seeking out a deity is looking up what qualities they have or what qualities in general a deity has that you are lacking qualities that you want to work on in yourself or things that you want to build up or um you know perfect or just kind of get things that you really want to be a part of your everyday life so you look up those qualities say you want to be more bold or more loving or you know more daring then literally get on the google box and say a deity that represents boldness and you know passion and and vivaciousness and google will tell you they will give you a list of deities from usually it goes from from all cultures like it'll go across all cultures and tell you what deities encompass those those traits and then you can find them write them down and then do individual studying on each of them to see which one fits you perfectly and again, during this process, something might pop up that goes, this one, this one is the one. Something might reveal itself. Maybe something will be colored in a color that is um, very sacred to you. Say you're looking up something and your favorite color is red and it's like eight different colors, but the red one just sticks out to you. You know what I mean? There are going to be lots of signs that tell you that this is the one. And remember that if it doesn't happen right away, it's okay. It, some things take time, sometimes it takes a long time for you to get that signal, to get that, it's me, you know what I mean? So just be patient and keep meditating about it, keep thinking about it and keep yourself open to it and something will come up. Or I started with nature spirits, just working with the general spirits of trees and just the feeling of nature that surrounds you when you're outside. That's what I started working with, just the natural energy that surrounds us until I had one of those creepy dreams. Now, just to preface, I have always, like my first, one of my first um, fields of study aside from herbs was uh, the Greek pantheon, because in school, that's what we learned about. We learned about uh, Greek mythology, and it was like a huge thing for a while. It was like a section of school when we were learning, learning about Greek, Greek mythology. And I was obsessed, and I went to the library, and I got all of these books, and I studied all of the Greek myths because I was super into it. I thought it was really fascinating. And then, you know, I just grew out of it and started learning about other things. Probably like seven or eight years later, I was having one of those annoying chasing nightmares, you know, we all have them where you're running and someone or a, a group of people you know is chasing you and no matter how far or how fast you feel like you're running they're always right there about to grab your behind and i hate it so i was having one of those types of dreams and i was booking it and i was running and i was like i can't run anymore like i don't know what to do and i was running like down the street and there's like a group of people it was the same lady and these men that always chased me in my dreams and i hated them it was this blonde lady she's a tall blonde lady with like a short hair like a, like an ellen haircut 
and then she had three big dudes with her and they were wearing black suits with black glasses and they were always chasing me. And they're chasing me down the street and I'm running, there's a forest to my left, so I turn to go into the forest and I'm running and I'm running and I'm running out of breath and I feel like I'm gonna die. I'm, I'm like, I'm just gonna fall down and lay here and let them get me because I don't know what to do. And I'm running and I'm like about to give up and look to my left and there's this girl running next to me with short, like black hair, like really shiny hair. She's running next to me and then she looks, she looks at me and then she keeps looking and she's running and she starts running faster like she's racing me, like let's race. And then I was like, mm, okay, you know? And so I started running faster and running faster and she's going and I'm going and we're running and I turn around and the, the man and the lady are getting further and further behind me and I'm like getting excited and the girl's laughing and I'm laughing and the clearing is up ahead and I run into the clearing and I feel like I'm safe and I'm just like, I stop running and like, you know, I'm not out of breath because it's a dream. I'm just standing there in the sun and then like, I look to the left, I see the girl, and then when I look back out, it's night, and then the moon is right in front of me. So, that's when I started working with Artemis. And after that, that was basically the only deity that I've really, like, worked with has been Artemis. Because that was pretty, that was a pretty, that was one of those dreams of just, like, boom, this is what's happening now. So, <laughs> not everyone's gonna have that, like, kind of really uh, interesting dream experience, but it's definitely possible, and you can definitely, you know, you can definitely make that kind of dream experience happen by working on that dream magic and that dream work and having a dream experience like that where the deity comes to you and reveals himself to you. Even just after watching this video, I bet that some people will have a deity dream after this because just having that idea in your mind and just having that like that goal in mind and then hearing about it and then talking about it during the day helps your subconscious to just kind of put that energy out there like oh this is what you're thinking about this is what's going on with you this is the energy that's surrounding you and the dream will just happen oh my gosh if anyone has a deity dream after watching this video please comment or just literally just message me on instagram i would love to hear about it because i love how it happens to me all the time when it's a subject that i'm thinking about or that i'm working on and then i hear something on tv talking about it and then that night I'll dream about it just because it has been you know repeated more than once during the day which i think is a super dope a super dope thing another thing that you can do is just to look for the type of deity that you would like to work with say you are a new mother and you're looking for some new mother energy you're looking for someone to come in and help you with the the wonderful joy of having a new child and maybe you're overwhelmed and you need some guidance then go ahead and go into the google box and type in mother goddess and they'll all come up or you can choose one uh, based on the traits that they have and make the decision there and then do more studying the more studying you do about their story their origin where they came from all of that the closer and tighter your connection will be so that at a certain point you'll get like direct you'll be in that direct line there are lots of things that you can do once you have chosen a type of deity or you have chosen a deity to honor them or to thank them or to bring them into your space more often. There are deity candles that you can make for them based on what herbs are sacred to them or um, what oils or flowers are sacred to them or you don't have to put anything in it at all. You can just have a candle that represents them, a color that represents them on your altar, in your sacred space or whatever. There are of course offerings that you can give if you want to give offerings. If you feel like they are desiring offerings. You can also give offerings before you even choose a deity, um, depending on what offering you think um, suits your your path. You put that out there and see what deity is like, oh, this is an offering that looks like it's for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and talk to this person. You know what I mean? There are just so many different ways that you can choose a deity or then a deity can choose you. So just be really open to to the possibilities that it's someone that you have never heard of, someone that maybe you don't want to work with, someone that is just completely on a different planet than you. Just be open to that idea and be open to doing a great deal of studying because like I said, the more studying, the more knowledge you have about them, the deeper your connection will be, the more you'll know what they like, what they dislike, what they want, what they don't want, how they can guide you, where they're going to guide you, and if that relationship is going to work out for you. And remember, be humble be open don't try to you're not making the rules let's just put it that way you are not setting the pace here you are asking a higher power a an infinite energy to help you the human person on earth so be gracious and be 
very respectful at all times and understand that things aren't going to happen the way you want them to all the time and you're just going to have to roll with that just roll with it i'll definitely do another video about this i'm going to do loads of videos about this because i really do want to talk more about the most common deities that people work with and the least common reasons for working with different deities so forth and so on so we'll definitely continue to go on this deity road trip together and thank you so much to goddess provisions for this wonderful box i think we'll start with isis since we got this beautiful isis box i think it'll be really fun to talk about isis so i hope everyone has a what haves <laughs> everyone has a wonderful evening and an absolutely lovely valentine's day mm -hmm. Mwah!